there's a passage that's probably very familiar to you, a passage which has spoken deeply into my spirit many times over the years, a passage which I believe is an important invitation for us today as we come to worship. It's the words of Jesus in Matthew 11, 28. Come to me. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Perhaps you're coming to worship today, and you're weary and you're burdened from COVID <laughs> and its duration. Maybe you're coming weary and burdened because of a personal or family struggle. Perhaps you're weary and burdened because of the demands of life and family. Perhaps you're weary and burdened because of the physical, emotional, and mental challenges you're faced with. Or perhaps, perhaps you're weary and burdened and you don't even know why. Hear the call of Jesus as you come to worship today. Come to me. Come to me. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Come.
John Maxwell says that leadership's not about title, positions, or flow charts. It's about one life influencing another. Bill Bradley says that leadership is unlocking people's potential to become better. Oprah Winfrey says leadership is about empathy. It's about having the ability to relate to and connect with people for the purpose of inspiring and empowering their lives. Leadership isn't a new concept. Right now, you could go on Amazon and type in leadership and you would have tens of thousands of resources at your fingertips. You would find books on leadership that tell you how to get people to follow and listen to you, how to achieve influence and make a difference. You can find titles about how to make your name known, <clears throat> how to build your company, and yeah, even how to acquire positions of power. But when Jesus came along, he decided to flip the narrative of leadership on its head. People didn't expect that at all. And it's not the kind of marketing strategy that you would use if you wanted to have the best-selling how-to for a leadership book today. In Matthew 20, 25 to 28, this is what Jesus says about leadership. Jesus called them together and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as a son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. In Christ, the goal of our leadership is to not grab power, but to serve. Jennifer Stasak of Wycliffe Translator says, leadership is, about making our, is not about making our names known. It's about making God's name known and having the ability to love and respect the people in our care using the authority we have been given with grace. Here at Polson, we have made our fifth core value about leadership, godly servant leadership. Here's what it says. Godly servant leadership. Identifying raising up godly servant leaders is critical to us becoming like Jesus and having a kingdom impact. These individuals are voluntary servants who commit themselves to God's purpose. They, out of love, use the gifts that are entrusted to them to serve others and they serve in what they say and do to help others become servant leaders and Christ followers. I'd like to take a few minutes today just to, to break down these four key parts of our statement. First, identifying and raising up godly servant leaders is critical to us becoming like Jesus and having kingdom impact. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 to 13, G, uh, Paul says these words, So Christ gave himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. And here's why he gave them. To equip his people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up, until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Christ gave us leaders. 
Christ appointed leaders, Christ called leaders to equip us to serve. Why? So that we may be built up until we reach unity in the faith and become mature like Jesus. As we identify and raise up godly servant leaders, the ones that Christ has placed here within our body, we move forward. We move forward to becoming more mature, to becoming more like Jesus, and we have an ongoing kingdom impact. I've noticed over the years that many times people don't see themselves as leaders. As a matter of fact, a number of you listening today might not see yourself as a leader. So part of our responsibility, part of our responsibility and our privilege as followers of Christ is, to, is that we speak into the lives of one another. And as we speak into the lives of one another, we help each person to see, to see the place that, that they are gifted and where God is calling them to. And, and to help them to be the servant leader as they use those gifts and fulfill that calling. <laughs> you know, it's awesome. It's awesome to think that we get to help you, that we get to help one another to become the servant leader God has created and designed us to be. Isn't that magnificent? I get to help you, you get to help me to become the servant leader God has called and gifted and designed us to be. Today, I believe many churches are suffering. I believe that they are suffering and not experiencing the fuller blessing of God's presence because, of, because many of the people in, are not discovering the reality of who they are and not living out their gifts. And, and they've not been in, encouraged to get off the sidelines and uh, to stop being a spectator and to stop being an observer and, and instead to get in, to get into the work of the kingdom that God's called and created them to be. And, and if, that's, if that's how you're feeling right now, if, you're, if you feel like you're on the sideline or you're just a spectator, I, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to say, okay, I'm coming off the bench. Let's start this journey. Because I believe that as, as each of us f more fully discover who we are in Jesus and see the giftings he's given to us, and then we live in that reality, I believe that we are going to see blessing upon blessing from God. And I believe that those blessings are going to transfer into not only our own spiritual growth and the unity of us, us as believers together, but I believe it's going to transfer into the building of the kingdom where more and more people are going to come into a saving faith and realize the good news and the love of God. Godly servant leadership is required and needed and essential. And God is calling you and God is calling me to be a godly servant leader. We want to serve together in helping each person to identify and to rise up to be the servant leader in the areas and ministries that God has called and created them to be in. I can think of nothing better for us to do than to help one another become all that God wants us to be. Second, we say that these individuals, these godly servant leaders, are voluntary servants who commit themselves to God's purpose. The essence, style, and attitude of servant leadership, I believe, is found in Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 to, 17, 3 to 7, excuse me. And here's what it says. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped or something to be used to his own advantage, but rather he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant and being made in human likeness. Leadership has to do with purpose and direction. I believe that as we look at the life of Jesus, everything he did from his baptism to the cross was laden with purpose. In being a servant leader, his vision was clear. As a servant leader, he said to his potential followers, I know where I'm going. I want you to go with me and I'll serve you by giving you what you need along the way. 
as a servant leader. He understood the disciples' giftedness. He gave them work in line with their giftedness. He, he held them accountable and helped them with their weaknesses. And he took time to explain. To explain again and again where he was going and what God had called them to. Servant leaders are committed to God's purpose and will above all else. And they live with those things at the center of what they say and do. Third, they out of love use the gifts they are entrusted to them to serve others. In 1 Peter 4.10, Peter says these words, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. As believers, we are all called to be servants. When we assume the responsibility to, to motivate people, to, to bring about the changes in their lives that, that are needed, we, we need to be servant leaders at that moment. We journey with them, we serve them, but we also help to lead them, to lead them forward, to help them to take the next step, to encourage them, to spur them on. As we live out our purpose to be the church that loves, and as we accept the value of transformational community where lives are changed, we help to lead one another. We help to lead one another into the fullness of our identity in Christ and to fulfilling God's call and purpose for us, both individually and corporately. This call of leadership, as should be with every believer, is, is fulfilled out of love. As, as we allow the Spirit of God to empower us, as we develop our life around a biblical worldview, as, as we engage in whole life worship and, and kingdom-directed prayer, and as we serve one another in transformational community, love is always the basis upon which it's built. In this love, in this love, we use the gifts God has given to us to make his grace known through us to one another and to our world. As believers and leaders, the unity and health of the church is strengthened. And God's call on our lives is fulfilled as we serve and lead together. We live out the call on our lives by using our gifts out of love. And fourth, servant leaders serve in what they say and do to help others become servant leaders and Christ followers. A servant leader learns to see people through the eyes of Jesus and with Christ's love. Out of that, they serve in what they say and what they do to, to help others become servant leaders and to strengthen and encourage and support and love people as they move forward, as they move forward on the journey of, of following Jesus. Servant leadership serves others by investing in their development and well-being for the greater good. Christian servant leaders serve God. They serve God through investing in others so that together they may become who God has created them to be and they may live out his purpose for them, uh, that he has for them, that it may bring glory to his name. So as we see from the teaching and the example of Jesus, we learn that a servant leader is, in the most general sense, means being a, a voluntary servant. A voluntary servant who submits themselves to a higher purpose, which is greater and beyond their personal interests and the interests of others. 
It means being a leader who, who uses the power that is entrusted to them to serve others. It means being a servant. A servant who, out of love, serves others' needs above their own. And it means being a teacher. A teacher who teaches their followers in word and in deed how to become servant leaders and how to become followers of Christ. Friends, I want to say to us very clearly today, in order for us to be able to become the church and the people God has called us to be, we need one another. We need one another to accept the call of godly servant leadership. We need one another to accept the call to take the gifts that God has given to us and to, to allow them to be used in our lives and, and through the Holy Spirit and to use them as a part of the body in the places and the ways that God has designed for us to use them. If we are going to become more fully the church God is calling us to be, you and I need to accept the challenge, the challenge to live as godly servant leaders. So will you say yes? Will you say, here I am, Lord. I'm ready to accept the call to be the godly servant leader you've called me to be. You know, here we are. Here we are at the final message on the core values, inviting us. Inviting us again to respond to the invitation to accept and, and to join together in living out the core values we believe that God has given to us as a church. So where do you stand? Are you ready? Are you ready to accept the call to spirit-empowered biblical living? To accept the call to whole life worship? To accept the call to kingdom-directed praying? To accept the call to live as part of a transformational community and to accept the call to be a godly servant leader. It is a journey. It's a journey of discovering what all this looks like as we try to live it out. It's a journey where we will need to trust God and, and listen intently to the Holy Spirit. It's a journey that offers great excitement and many challenges. It's a journey, a journey of Christ and kingdom, commitment, courage, and community. It's a journey, a journey that I'm ready to go on. How about you? Pray with me. Lord God, we believe that you have given to us the identity of Polson Park, a church that loves. And we believe that you have given to us these core values to to use as the, the guide or the, the evaluation tool or the, the system or the structure. I'm not even sure what the word is right now, God. But you've given to us these values to base living out that reality upon. And we, we want to ask you, Father, to call us, to call us beyond our apprehensions, to call us beyond our fears, call us beyond our pains and our past experiences, even to call us beyond our own self, and to call us to being the people who live out these values. Call us to be people who, 
who live spirit-empowered biblical worldview living. People who, who experience whole life worship each moment of each day as we are aware of your presence. People who pray, who pray kingdom-directed prayers for your kingdom to come and your will to be done and to have it to begin in us. People who value and live out the reality of transformational community and where lives are changed, where we help one another to discover who we really are in Christ and to live out and fulfill that purpose he's called us to individually and corporately. And God, may we accept the call to godly servant leadership. Whatever might make us shrink back from that, God, I pray that even now you'd, you'd remove those things. And I pray that pride would not get in the road that we might come into leadership thinking more highly of ourselves than we ought, but that we would take the call to godly servant leadership in which the call to serve is lived out in love. So Lord, there's a lot about this journey that's still a mystery, a lot about this call that's yet to be fulfilled. And God, I know there's going to be lots of challenges, and at times, even spiritual opposition. But I pray, I pray that you will unite us in Jesus Christ, that you will allow us to be Polson Park, a church that loves, and that we will allow the core values to become what we base our life upon, for your honor and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.